everyone. Welcome to Onyx Moon Home and Halls, and I am here with you today to do another Universal Yums cheese. Say cheese, Tony. <laughs> All right. Today we are doing. You want to show it this time? Italy. Yay! Nice. His home country. The food of my people. Yeah. Also, I'm here too. Of course, right. I'm here for As always, you will be the reader. Alright. I'm not big on Italian food. Not funny, right? I married an Italian. My kids are Italian. And I don't really like care for Italian food. Yeah, well, nobody's perfect. Mm. <laughs> All right. I like the people, just not the food. And yes, I am wearing the same costume that, that I did my last video. Just because I did them both in one night. What's first? All right, first up. Peppercini potato chips. Yeah, I think I'm going to dig this. When potatoes were first introduced in Italy, they were referred to as tartufoli, meaning small truffles, and weren't considered a fitting food for humans, only animals. <laughs> Many even believe the root vegetable to be poisonous. Today, potatoes are an important part of the Italian diet. Italians enjoy their potatoes fried, pureed, and in the form of chips. In fact, you'd be hard-pressed to find an Italian bar without potato chips on the menu. Potato chips are often enjoyed as part of an aperitivo. aperitivo? I, don't, I don't know how to speak Italian. I'm Italian, I don't know how to speak Italian. An afternoon snack and drink that precedes dinner. While most Italian potato chips are thin and crispy, these vintage potato chip potatoes, pepperoncinis, are an extra crunchy, kettle-cooked style potato chip and boldly flavored with the pepperoncini. Enjoy these rustic chips with your favorite cocktail or soda for the perfect Italian. And there's that word again. Can I see the Aperitivo word? hour. I need my soda. Smell it. Smell it. It doesn't smell bad. I dig it. Cheers. I dig it. I, I dig it. I like that. I got to get to my drink too. Almost reminds me of barbecue chips. No way. Almost. That's a smoky taste. Can you taste that smoky taste? I can see that now. Yeah. Okay. I like it. I'll give it a six out of ten. Seven maybe. I really like mm. chips, so. Oh. Eight. Eight. I'm going eight. Eight point five. I like those a lot. That's very good. What are you going to give it, Cadence? Uh, I'm going to give it a two because I don't really like flavor. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Put it in your mouth, babe. Next up. Crispy almond cookies. This might be good. Amoretti are traditional dry, crunchy cookies with a slight bittersweet taste. The word amoretti shares the same root as amaro, the Italian word for bitter. Amoretti are frequently enjoyed as a casual snack accompanying a cup of tea or espresso. But they're also used in, as components of other desserts and can be crushed and added to tiramisu, tiramisu for an extra crunch are used as a topping for gelatos or cakes. In the Lombardy and Emilia Romagna regions, Romagna, Amoretti cookies are combined with mashed pumpkin to make a popular filling for tortellini pasta. The brand 
that makes these crispy almond cookies. Warrior Master Bakers was founded in 1972 in Materia, a city in the yada yada region. That is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Materia has been continuously occupied since the late Paleolithic era. Why are they telling us that? I don't know. Here, Cadence. Why do I care that it was occupied? Why do I get so many? So they put this into tiramisu. Tiramisu. Is that isn't that like hearty, not sweet? Tiramisu? No, it's a dessert. No. Oh. All right. It's a cake. Cheese. Cheese. <laughs> Cheese. Cheers. Oh, they're good. Yeah. Mm, I like it. All right. They're really light. Like a wafer almost. It's giving me a cherry taste. A little bit, yeah. That's the almond. That's the almond, yeah. I like these. It's like cereal. It's like dry cereal. I give these a 10 out of 10. These are mine. I give this an 8 out of 10. It's pretty good. I'm about an 8 on this one. About an 8 on this one. Oh, that's that. Yeah, not bad. One more. One more. The only thing I don't like about it is the texture. Mm-hmm. Oh. A little crunchy. Oh. I like the aftertaste. It's like a shortbread almost. Mm-hmm. Mm, good. It is good. Chocolate tiramisu cake. While many people consider tiramisu to be a classic Italian dessert, it wasn't invented until the mid-20th century. A tiramisu is typically made of ladyfingers soaked in coffee and sometimes liqueurs, then layered with a rich cream made from egg, sugar, mascarpone cheese. Wait, that's the one we're doing right now? I thought we were reading that one. Oh no. That's the on that. Keep reading. Before being dusted with cocoa powder. The name tiramisu comes from the Italian phrase Tiramisu, meaning pick me up, which may refer to the addition of strong espresso or simply how one feels after enjoying a hearty portion. Over time, tiramisu has taken on many forms and variations, including cakes, gelatos, and frozen desserts. Uh, tiramisu ice cream, bomb. This murder tiramisu snack sized portable version of the original dessert features a creamy filling, a soft cake, coated in chocolate. Get a nice okay, cake. so it's like a little Debbie. It's like a little Debbie cake, kind of. What it looks like, yeah. Like those uh, zebra cakes. Yeah, right. It's like but a zebra is cake. Is it gonna taste like coffee? <laughs> Tatum, did you want to try this stuff with us? <laughs> Is she getting sick? What? Are you gonna be trying this stuff with us? You're always calling your boy. Yes or no? Okay. Here. It's okay, yummy. so I cut into it. That's what it looks like. Cover your face. There we go. It smells like coffee or liquor. Yeah. I don't think I'm gonna like this. Love you. Looks good. Okay. Mm -mm. Mm. There's something funky in there. It's liquor. I find it delicious. Tastes like. Tastes like. Te tequila. Well, it can't be liquor, liquor. They wouldn't be able to solve it. But... Yeah, I get you. I, it, I find it tasty. I don't mind it. I give it an eight. I give that a big fat <laughs> zero. <laughs> I'd say four. Four. It's good up until the aftertaste, then it's funky. It's yummy to me. No, not <coughs> yummy to me. I'll eat the rest of it. Oh, okay. All right, oh. back to this that I was showing you guys originally. You know, Mm-hmm. All right. 
tomato and oregano wheat rings. Mm. Tar tarali no. are a type of O-shaped crackers that hail from Southern Italy. These tarallini are simply petite versions of the original. Made from simple ingredients like wheat flour, salt, olive oil, water, these crackers are delightfully light with a crunchy, crumbly texture. Tarali are frequently enjoyed plain, but also come in a variety of flavors like fennel seed, peppercini, and olive. Some regions even produce sweetened tarali. These tarallini are flavored with tomato and oregano, which sets them apart from the simpler, more traditional versions. For a delicious snack, pair these crumbly crackers with cured meats, aged cheeses, and chilled Italian soda. They all look like okay, little so shoes. Like... Nice. Hey, Dad, look, it's the coin from one place. Mm hmm. Those are good in the soup, like a tomato soup. Yep. Those are good. Oh, not bad. This is a six out of ten. They remind me of goldfish. The snack, the snack that, that smiles, smiles back. back. Goldfish. Huh? I like them. I like them. Milk chocolate bar with pistachio filling. I Ooh, love nice. pistachios. The startling green packaging of this chocolate bar should be a big clue to the flavor inside. Hidden beneath a thin coating of milk chocolate is a smooth pistachio cream <clears throat> and crunchy bits of caramelized pistachios. Pistachios were brought to Sicily from the Middle East during the Roman times. They're still grown there today. And, and in fact, Sicily is the sole growing region for pistachios in Italy, responsible for approximately 1% oh, of production really. worldwide. Pistachios are extremely popular in Italian cuisine and are commonly used in both sweet and savory dishes, but they go particularly well with chocolate. Pistachio trees are harvested only once every two years, so make sure you savor every bite of this award-winning chocolate bar. Fantastic. <laughs> Calm down, kid. Looks like they got a little compass rose on the top. And... Cheers. Up oh, good. Mm. Delicious. Mm. Mm. Delicious. Melts real quick on your fingers, though. That's nice. Mm -hmm. Not a big chocolate person. But no, it's quite nice. I'll give this an 8 out of 10. I just don't really like chocolate all that much. 10. Good. Agree. 9. Ten. I'll go one up. I'll do 9. 10. 10 for Katie Cat. Alright. Mmm. Next on the menu, assorted flavored jelly candies. Ooh. Do four. Fans, not your number. Fruit now. jellies. These fruity chews hail from the Italian port city of Genoa, where the Dufour brand was born in 1926. While Dufour initially focused on making licorice, it eventually introduced fruity confections, including its big fruit jellies, soft jelly candies that come in wild strawberry, raspberry, blueberry, and gooseberry flavors. What's a gooseberry? Wild strawberry is a popular flavor in Italy. The ruby colored fruit grows well in the warm Mediterranean climate and is featured in a number of classic Italian desserts. Gooseberry is perhaps the most interesting flavor of the bunch, particularly to American palates. 
Gooseberries are tart and round and look somewhat similar to a grape. Though not common in America, they're popular throughout Europe. Plus, they make delicious candy. I didn't get one of those. A gooseberry? Mm -mm. There's nothing in here that kinda, looks like a grape. I was kind of looking forward to it. Isn't that what that is? That's a blueberry. Oh. I was kind of looking forward to a gooseberry. What's this? What flavor is this? Which one? Raspberry. Wait, that's next. That one's next. This one's right now. Uh, yeah. All right. Big fruit jellies. How are they jelly? Are they jelly? Oh, they are jelly. Okay, so these look like something that we tried or already tried. It's crystallized with sugar, but it's a like a jelly. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Raspberry is pretty good. Strawberry. Mm. How about? I love it. All right. Tasty. I give it. A, I give it an eight. Actually, no, I give it a nine. I give it an eight. I give it a nine. It's pretty good, actually. I give it a seven, no, maybe six and a half. Just I don't like things coated in sugar. That's me. Mm -hmm. But it kind of reminds me of the. The little frickin' gummy candies that Grandma used to have on her frickin' in the glass bowl on the coffee table. You know what I'm talking about? I'm sure everybody, is, you know, you get that in your head. You know exactly what I'm talking about. And next is these chewy candy. Assorted flavor chewy candy. Ella Miller Fruity Tuffy. I'm probably butchering all these words. Open it. it the Italian it. word toffee, like evolved from the English word taffy, refers to chewy candies made from boiled down syrups. Like taffy, these millifruity toffee are sweet and chewy, but made even better with the bold fruity flavor. Like millifruity translates to a thousand fruits, a fitting name for these candies, which come in lemon, orange, strawberry, and peach flavors. Francesco Molli founded Ella in 1909 in the Italian port city of Genoa. While most traditional Italian candies feature flavors like mint, anise, coffee, the the flavors of this toffee reflect Genoa's unique positions as a port. Citrus fruits like lemons and oranges would have been imported from Sicily, while strawberries and peaches would have historically came from France. And you guys already ate it, which- I did, yeah. So it starts off with the kind of the same consistency as taffy, but then it kind of like, Disintegrates a lot faster than taffy would. I see, give it a seven I mean. because I like the flavor. Give it a I six. like that. But the, that texture just ain't for me. Isn't. Isn't. <coughs> you see how it disintegrates a lot mm -hmm, quicker mm -hmm. than that. I kind of like it. Well, I kind of dig it. I like it. I like the way it does that. It's nice. I'm with it. Alright, what's that? Um, oh, these five. Almond and orange flavored cookies. Pastachino means little pea pastry. Oh, pastachino, mandalor mandorlato, aran arancio. Pastachino means little pastry, and the term encompasses all manner of small Italian baked goods from cannolis to cookies to meringues. These pasticino mandorlata arancia are small cookies that are crispy on the outside with soft tender interior. Flavored with rich almonds and fragrant orange, these cookies offer a classic flavor of Sicily. Thanks to the warm Mediterranean climate, almonds and oranges grow abundantly on the island of Sicily and traders like likely brought both of the middle from the Middle East sometime between 2000 and 1000 BC. Pasticini are ideal as an afternoon treat and go especially well with tea or a cup of coffee. If you want to enjoy pasticini the Italian way, be sure to pair them with espresso. Mmm, I don't know. I don't know about this. I don't like my orange in uh, like cookies and cakes. It smells orangey. But it looks like a... It doesn't, doesn't seem like it's going to be too bad. looks like a tiny like lemon pound cake. Very much. 
They're kind of harder than you would expect when you touch them. They're denser. Mm. Mm -hmm. Like stale biscuit. Okay. Cheers. Hold on. Get in my smells good. It smells good. I actually like that. Oh, it's not bad. I like that I a lot. Know. I'll give it a five out of ten. I like that a lot. I'll give that an eight. As eight. As I'm with it. Eight. It almost tastes and feels like it has coconut in it. But you see what I'm talking about? I want to consider a very a very cake like mm. texture. Hmm. Not liking it all of a sudden. It has a strong orange flavor. Mm -hmm. Strong. Mm -hmm. I can handle it. Oh, that's kind of... That's kind of like a kitchen cleaner. I wouldn't go that extreme, but mm. close. Pledge cookies. <laughs> Yum. After that last bite, I'm going to have to take the, uh, the eight down to a... We'll go six. We'll go six. That was a strong orange flavor. That's a little too strong. Mm. I didn't really care for it. it. Smells good, tastes the same. Mm. The only reason why I don't give it a nine or ten is because is because I want to consider consider it a cake like texture. Novi Gandua. Giandua? Gandua? Mm. Uh -huh. Hazelnut chocolate bar. A lot easier to say. This delectable chocolate bar features rich and creamy Gandua, Gandua, a paste made from chocolate, hazelnuts, and sugar. After Christopher Columbus brought back cocoa beans from one of the, his voyages across the Atlantic Ocean, chocolate slowly spread throughout Europe. During Napoleon's Regency in the early 19th century, cocoa became increasingly expensive owing to blockades on products coming from the United Kingdom. Giandua was invented as a way of making chocolate stretch further by blending it with rich and oily hazelnuts, which grow abundantly in the Piedmont region. The combination was successful and that so successful that Giandua has become one of Italy's most iconic treats. It can be used as a spread for crepes or toast, but it's also a common ingredient in the cakes, gelato, and of course, chocolate bars. So it's hazelnut, hazelnut chocolate. Nice. I like hazelnut. Like not like Nutella. Oh, it's a Nutella candy bar. Oh, nice. I like Nutella. Sweet. Oh, this smells good. Cheers. That's all right. I don't like it. It's a little bitter. Yeah. Like dark chocolate, and I freaking yeah. I hate dark chocolate. It tastes like chocolate, but I don't like dark chocolate. But I'll eat it if I have to. So take a bit nibble of the Easter mm. chocolate. So yeah, that is my trash bin. It's all right. I mean, I'm with you. I'm in that boat. I don't dig dark chocolate. I only like. I only like. I don't think anybody actually likes dark chocolate. I think people do. I think they lie and say they like it to seem so sophisticated. Your mom liked it. Oh yeah, but she was old and had no taste buds. I specifically like milky chocolate. All right, last one. All right. Pan Tosto Aglio and Pretzamolo. 
garlic and parsley bruschetta bites. Founded in 1978 in Torino, La Mole began as a bakery specializing in Turinese breadsticks. The company has since grown and expanded its offerings to include a range of sweet and salty baked goods. These crispy breadsticks take inspiration from the classic Italian dish bruschetta, which is made from stale or toasted bread and a variety of toppings including olive oil, garlic, tomato, salami, cheese, and or herb. These pan to tosto, aglio, and pretzamolo feature a simple combination of garlic and parsley made for the perfect savory salty snack. Toasted bread products like bread chips, breadsticks, and feta biscotti, a slightly sweet bread cracker, are popular throughout Italy and enjoyed as simple snacks or incorporated into meals. I don't know if I'm going to dig this one. I think I will. Is it smells it? really good. Yeah, Where's boy. It? Hello, garlic. Mm -hmm. I love garlic. Me too. All right. Cheers. Oh, my gosh. Mm. Tastes just like a... a it's good. You can put it on salad. What are they called? Croutons. Mm-hmm. It's like little... a giant crouton. Mm-hmm. I'm tasting a little Alfredo in there. That's probably the garlic. Mm. Yeah, it's just a giant crouton with good flavor. Mmm. Mm. Mm, real good. Can you tell I like it? I'm getting crumbs everywhere. Mm. Ah, I can't eat the rest of it. Mm -hmm. I'll give this a 10 out of 10. I give it a 10 out of 10. Like the picture? Four. A four? You don't like four times? Flavor's fine, but it's too, the crunchiness is just too much. Mm -mm. Yeah, I agree. It's like I'm biting into a freaking pumice bar. It's like cr too hard. That's what she said. You got it. <laughs> but it would be good in like soups, like it shows. Mm hmm. Mm, look at that soup. There's a recipe if you want to mm. pause it. I could see that, you know, mm. something to soften it up. Mm. It'd be good in salad. Mm hmm. I bet match the pasta shapes. There's one of their games in here. Gelato versus ice cream. I've never had gelato. What's the difference? I don't know. I guess it says right there. Oh, that's just the Italian word for ice cream. Very similar. It has very different texture. Gelato has more milk than cream and is churned slowly, resulting in a denser, softer dessert with deeper flavor. Huh. So pretty much just a fancy ice cream. Yep. All right. Well, boys and ghouls, I hope you enjoyed our, what's it called again? Yum's box. Yum's box. Yeti Universal Yum. Yum's. Oh yeah. With me. With our daughter, Cadence. Like every Yum's box for real. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, yeah, I forgot to show you guys my puppers at the end of the last video. So I will get up and show you guys now. How are you going to do that? I'm going to take my phone with me. Okay. All right. So. I can't turn the camera around. Oh. Come here, Ragnar. Ooh, double chin. Say hi, Ragnar. My little puppers. And then there's the big girl. That's Freya. Ragnar and Freya. Freya and Ragnar. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. You got big wide noses. Mm -hmm. Can you believe, guys, that he is only... 
like three and a half months old. And he's already almost as big as my female. He's gonna be huge. Huge. Sit. Freya, sit. Big girl. Nope. Too excited. Look how big his paws are. Look at that. Okay. Anywho. That was my puppers. Sorry if you've seen any mess. <laughs> um, anyways, love you guys. And I hope you guys have a good evening, morning, or night. Wherever you are. Hope you're having a good one. Remember, stay strange, but don't be a stranger. And with that, I'll catch you later. Bye.